Bitcoin to $131,763. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why I'm under the belief that Bitcoin can reach over $130,000 within the bull market that we are now in and what I personally am going to be doing because of it. Now, I know it's a bold price prediction that some of you may not like, but that's the name of the game. And well, at the end of the day, we will see. Now, what I want you to understand before we even get into the video is that this is purely a technical perspective. And this is a thesis that was generated specifically off of technical analysis. What you need to understand is that you cannot make your full investment thesis only off of TA and charts. It's just not how this works. You need to use a combination of fundamental analysis and technical analysis, and in my opinion, liquidity analysis to be able to see if things are feasible and then create a thesis behind them. But in today's video, I wanted to specifically just focus on the technical side of things as to how I got to, of course, $130,000 plus. So first and foremost, starting off with Bitcoin, let's talk about how the foundation of this thesis is even set. The foundation of this thesis is set on the idea that Bitcoin has a tendency to move the same way almost every single couple years. What you can see here is that Bitcoin has a tendency to put in a macro low to a macro high and the time in between those two is usually about 111 weeks. Now sometimes it's 108, sometimes it's 120, but roughly in between that 105 to 120 week range we are going to see a macro low to a macro high. Look at this. Macro low to macro high. Macro low to macro high macro low to macro high okay so ever since 2011 this has been the consistent movement that bitcoin itself has seen now if we were to take this into mind okay if we were to take this into mind that would say that we could possibly see some type of macro high somewhere in about 111 weeks from the last macro low which was in of course december of 2022 which puts us roughly starting around january of 2025 just to about as far as april of 2025 which is of course about one year after the halving which does align with many you know um, analyst expectations now historically speaking whenever we're talking about how often we will see all-time highs placed for bitcoin what you will see is that it is usually roughly one year to one and a half years after a previous halving so what we can see of course is this line represents the year of the halving which is in 2024 and each quadrant is a year and so if we go from of course the year of the halving up one year this is whenever we did see a ton of all-time highs already getting placed which i do believe is a possibility this time around and then generally between this year and this year so of course 2013 to 2014 17 to 18 21 to 22 and 25 to 26 that is generally the time frame in which we would then again see an all-time high placed so based off of not only just what bitcoin's price has done historically but basing it off of the spiral pattern to show when these all-time highs are typically placed on a time horizon i would be under the belief that we could see some type of all-time high around you know january to march of 2025 so that's my time horizon now now, the question then becomes, okay, well, how did we get to $130,000? Well, in those time frames, okay, in those time frames from, of course, week one to week 120 to 110, we will generally see something very similar play out, and it's all revolved around your Fibonacci's. Now, I'm not going to go super deep into what your Fibonacci's are. All you need to know is that it's a key zone of liquidity that has a high chance of rejecting the price. Or if you're going up towards it, it's likely to reject you down. If you're going down towards it, it's likely to bounce you back up. Now, I did do a full breakdown of how this works and a little bit more of a historical breakdown on how it all works on my show the other day. It's called The Crypto Catch Up with Tyler Hill. I do it two to three times a week over in HG access you guys know we've been talking about hd access a ton recently so go check that out the links are down in the description below we've been making some absolute winners recently i mean it's just been absolutely ridiculous the winners we've been printing talking about 49 percent, 22 percent, of course 92 percent, 17 percent over and over again so go check that out links are down below but at the end of the day again this is all revolved around the fibonacci's now when i'm looking at the fibonacci's what you're going to do is you're going to draw your fibonacci high at your macro high and your Fibonacci low to your macro low. What that would look like in this example for, of course, 2013 to 2015 is drawing the high from about $1,163 uh, $1, down to about $160. Now, whenever you draw out your Fibonacci, something is going to appear called the 786 to 618 box. This is the zone that is the most likely to reject your price in the opposite direction, quite simply put like that. So what this means is that, as you can see, as the price started to work its way up towards the 786 zone, something started to happen. What started to happen was that our price, as soon as we got close to it, we immediately started to slow down here, right? This sideways movement. 
Then we broke up through this. We went straight up, straight to where? The 7A6 level here. As you can see, ran into some resistance, got the breakdown to support. Where was the support? The bottom side of the 618 level. We call this the party pooper zone because it has a history of, of course, giving us a little bit of issues and, of course, slowing down the party or being a party pooper. But what you can see is that the major interaction and the door that we had to walk through to enter into the bull market was in this 7A6 to 618 zone. In the moment we were able to break the 786 to 618 zone, it opened up the door for not only just an all time high, but an extension to the 1.272 or the 1.618 Fibonacci extension levels, in this case $3,963 at 1.618 or $1,995 at 1.272. What are Fibonacci extension levels? Again, quite simply put, these are the levels above your all time high or all time low that have the most history on a, on a range perspective of giving you some resistance or support meaning that once you get to a certain point above your all-time high you're this likely quote unquote this likely to get a rejection back to the downside or if you go down past a macro low you're that likely to get a bounce to the upside once you go a certain amount past that all-time low if that makes sense okay again like i said once we break this 618 to 786 box this is the zone and this is the time in which we will generally see the price start to really rally clearing up towards some of these fibonacci extension levels if we do move a little bit further what you can see is the same thing happened in the next bull market between of course around roughly 2018 to 2021 what you can see here is a price pulled back we came back up to this fibonacci level and look what happened we rallied 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 but then we slowed down for over a year right where did we slow down at for over a year at the party pooper zone the 618 to 786 fibonacci zone resistance 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 finally established support once we establish support here what happened boom rocket ship up directly where directly to the 1.618 box where did we pit stop before we got to the 1.618 level at the 1.272 level look at this we go straight up back test the 1.272 go straight to the 1.618 level at around sixty three thousand dollars before pulling back to where the 1.272 level before going back up to what the 1.618 level these fibonacci extensions are not and these fibonacci levels are not just random lines on a chart they are being actively interacted with every single day in every single asset class that has tradable assets okay and that's the reason why i do most of my trading based off of what's happening with the fibonacci's if we go over to something like margex right you can use those fibonacci's you can establish these fibonacci's draw them out to have a good idea of where these key levels of resistance and support are and you can see how much we interact and engage with each one of these levels if you do want to trade yourself you can use leverage trading if that's available in your region down with margex down below you don't need a vpn you don't need the kyc you can just use the exchange which is how i believe exchanges should be used so make sure you use that down below they have really good deposit bonuses as well and like i mentioned before you can access them you can do all of your trading in one place it's one of the best smaller exchanges that i've ever used so make sure that you do go check them out but as I mentioned before, when I'm doing my trading, when I'm going long, when I'm going short, I'm using these Fibonacci levels and, and I'm interacting with them and using it for where my support is, where my resistance is. And you can see historically from a macro perspective, that is exactly what Bitcoin does. So now knowing all of this, well, what does that mean now? What does that mean for the present day? Well, in the present day, where, what would you know? Bitcoin is sitting in between the 618 to the 786 box between $39,000 and $50,000. And what you can see is that this is the level where we started to stall at. We started to go a little bit sideways. We got this resistance. We had to melt up through it. We're getting these crashes and flash crashes like we saw yesterday. Why is that? Because this is the level that's the most likely to give us problems, but it acts like a door to the upside. And all we need to do, and if all we can do is just clear this 618 to 786 zone, historically speaking, we will then start to get our extensions towards the upside Fibonacci levels, which could be 1.272 at 104,000 or the 1.618 at 176,000. Now you may be asking, what does that look like? There's no way to really know, right? It might get rejected. We might get pushed back down to 30,000 and then have to come back and clear it similarly like what we saw back here. Or it could be similar to what we saw back, you know, 10, 8, 10 years ago in which we just kind of consolidate, get a little boring in here, and then we rocket ship through it. There's no way of knowing. I don't have a crystal ball. There's no way of knowing. But at the end of the day, once we do break it, especially if we back test and hold some support on it, the likelihood of us getting that move to upwards of $100,000 becomes extremely, extremely likely. Now... I know you're probably asking yourself, well, you said 130,000. Why is that? Because if the 1.272 is at 104 and the 1.618 is at 176, how do we get $130,000? Well, one thing you need to consider is that over time, Bitcoin's price does diminish returns. It's just what happens, right? And what that means is that the further we go up in market cap, the smaller these bull markets are going to get. 
And what we've seen historically was this first big rally back 2017, 18, 19. We saw it surpass that 1.618 level, right? Absolutely surpass it. But then what happened in that in the next bull market, the rally past the all-time high was about half, maybe even about 75% the size of the previous one, in which we only went up to that 1.618 level at $63,000. We didn't really have any success surpassing it. And so I'm under the belief that if we do pass that all-time high, once we do finally break this key level of resistance, that we're likely not going to just moon straight past 1.618 like we did a couple years ago. It'll probably be more similar to what we saw a few years ago, and was maybe at most we get to $176,000, but my opinion is we get about halfway there before failing some sort of back test and then going into a bear market, and that could be right around $131,000, which is right around halfway between your 1.2 and your your 1.272 and of course your 1.618. Now, that is fully a guess. There is no kind of um, statistical um, analytics that I can give you. There's no historical data that I can give you as to why I picked 131 other than it's about halfway through. And that is where my gut tells me after looking at these charts for years and years and years that we would possibly see Bitcoin's price go based off of the fundamental perspective of, of course, your Fibonacci's. Now, there's a ton of other things in which you could look at. You, of course, have things like Elliott's wave theory. You have Fibonacci logarithmic functions. You have all of these other things that you could base it off of. But my thesis comes down to the most simple technical analysis that I do, and that is always the Fibonacci's. And again, that's where I've seen the most gains from the trading that I do. And I, of course, do recommend that if you're wanting to start somewhere, probably best to start with the Fibonacci's. Like I did mention before, you can use Marjex down below. They're an amazing exchange. They're very, very helpful if you ever have any questions. No KYC necessary. You don't need a VPN. You can just sign up, log in, and start trading, and that's what I love about them. So I have a link down below. Make sure you do use that because I'm a partner with them. So of course, I hope you guys do go ahead and check them out. But at the end of the day, that is going to be about it. That's my thesis. That's my bold prediction for Bitcoin, $131,763. So of course, time will tell if I'm right and time will tell if I'm wrong. I would love to hear your opinions down in the comments below and I will see you all next time. Peace out, everybody.